I was just down in the root cellar getting the rest of this year's tomato crop that was frozen out of the freezer, brought it up, and we had more than I expected. There are still 10 one gallon bags full of tomatoes. So I am gonna start processing these. These are frozen. I have um, already done a video on processing and harvesting for the winter. In that you'll see this whole process of how to defrost and take off all the liquid so you're not boiling tomatoes for hours. Um, but we actually ran out of our homemade ketchup, so I need to replenish that stock. So I'm gonna go ahead, get these all peeled, and then put on trays to, to um, defrost and the liquid will come out. But check out the other video, I'll show you step by step how to do it. And then tomorrow I will go ahead and share with you how to make homemade ketchup. So I finished yesterday getting all the liquid out of the frozen tomatoes and I'm left with about a gallon and well gallon and a quarter, a gallon and a quarter of really thick tomato sauce for the ketchup we're gonna make. So I'm gonna go ahead and start prepping for that. I'm gonna need um, onions and garlic. I use maple syrup and um, vinegar and then some spices. Um, it's really simple, just need a really good um, blender. We use the Vitamix, but I know there's other really good ones out there too. Um, just to give a good consistency because that's the thing about ketchup you're going to want it to be um, similar to what you're used to buying um, so I'm going to go ahead and start chopping these up I'm going to need quite a few I'm going to need five um, some recipes just call for onion powder but I'm choosing to use onions we'll saute them and then real garlic instead of garlic powder. We have plenty of both, so I prefer the nutrition from them. So I have an estimate that I should get around eight um, pints of the ketchup, which I started, um, actually I'm gonna restart the water. Sterilize my jars. Because this is something I am going to water bath can so I can put them in my cabinet when we're done. You could also freeze it if you have lots of freezer space. So these can be roughly chopped because we're going to end up blending it. You're just going to get it on stove and cook it till it's translucent along with the garlic and then we'll blend it with the tomatoes. Chop up the garlic. I prefer the garlic not to be cooked as long. So one reason we decided to make our own ketchup, as you can see, it's a lengthy enough process. It's not necessarily super simple. Um, it's definitely cheaper to make um, depending on the type of ketchup you buy. So for us, we make our own because we want to control the ingredients that go into our ketchup. And if we're not making it, which is really new to us actually this year, we have been buying um, Primal Kitchen ketchup, which is unsweetened, um, organic and unsweetened. And this bottle for 11 ounces is, um, so let's see, hair so it's definitely smaller um, so this is let's see 16 ounces this is 11 ounces so this bottle here is six dollars which is a lot for ketchup 
Um, it has no sweetener in it whatsoever, and which is what we want because we want to control the sweetener. But we end up adding maple syrup to it just because we do prefer a sweeter ketchup. Um, so for me, this is a no-brainer. I had produced more tomatoes than really we could eat. I can put them in the freezer, take it out when I'm ready to do this, and um, eventually we'll produce our own maple syrup as well. That we're going to have some videos on that this winter. Um, right now we're purchasing it from the co-op, but once really you get the tomatoes and the syrup, there's really no cost. Vinegar, spices, relatively inexpensive, but six to six fifty a bottle for a small amount of ketchup is um, very expensive. So for us, it's worth the time and effort um, to go ahead and do it ourselves. Now, if I was buying a different type, which I certainly have in the past, um, you know, there's plenty of good organic ketchups that have um, sugar and no um, corn syrup in it. You can do that route too. That's much more economical, um, but for us, we prefer the maple syrup that just works better for our bodies. So we, um, you know, either do the primal, which again, feels very expensive to me, or we can make it ourselves with the abundance of tomatoes that we grow. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up these onions. I can hear them sizzling. And I'll prep up these garlic pieces. Again, it can be rough chopped because we're gonna puree everything in the blender. Sam and I, we got into homesteading really because of health. Um, we were buying, you know, moving into high quality food, raised uh, by local farmers, grass-fed um, meats, organic vegetables, or at least, you know, we knew the practices of the farmers we bought from. And um, it was all because we had, you know, health journey. We were on a health journey. And, um, you know, for me, unfortunately, I um, went through a time of, of healing. I was what I considered healed, feeling very vibrant. And um, for me, unfortunately, I'm sort of back in that position again. Um, you know, for my body, I ended up taking an antibiotic and that just, you know, my body does not do well with antibiotics um, and every body is different. So for me, unfortunately, I need to start, you know, shifting how I'm eating a little again to um, fix the problem, rebuild my um, microbiome in my gut and um, just rebuild my system in that way. So staying away from any regular sugars is really important for me. Um, and you know, it's really a lifestyle. It should be a commitment anyway. We've, we've already made that change. But now it's like I have to get just a little more intense about it. Um, and it just really has taught me the firm lesson that, you know, to use antibiotics only when absolutely really life-saving it's not you know for something that my body can can manage and there's certainly a lot of other things you can take um, a lot of other modalities for wellness um, that you know are available to us and it's just learning those and for me it was, it's been a pretty tough lesson to be honest with you um, yeah it's been really lousy but I am grateful that we can grow this really healthy food and we live in an area where we have access to really, you know, great farms, a lot of organic farmers, a lot of farmers who um, pasture raise animals. The meats, we're pretty lucky because that's sort of easier for us to grow than the vegetables, but, um, you know, we're learning. We're the garlic and onions. We've been doing for quite a few years. We feel pretty confident about that. The um, beets and carrots, better. But you know, I would love to get really good at um, broccoli, and um, we've had good years with cabbage. And then last year we were experimented with timing, and that didn't work out. So you know, it's a it's also a learning journey. It's not all known, but I'm so glad I have access to really good food 
very close to our home. And in fact, the local co-op, which is only 10 minutes from us, carries a lot of really good local farm organic produce, which can help nourish us if we don't grow it ourselves. And we're really happy to support that. We want that available. We're definitely not looking to be, you know, completely self-reliant here. We're looking to be more localized reliance, community sufficient, so to speak. This feels like a tremendous amount of garlic. So I think I'm going to stop here. These clothes are just so big. Onions are already looking translucent, which is great. Now I can add the garlic. So the onions are translucent. You can really smell the garlic. Smells great. So I'm going to go ahead and add the tomato puree. have to reheat the puree and then blend it because we don't want to put a cold liquid into a hot water bath or we'll break our large jars. See how crazy thick this is using the freezing and thawing method. Pretty much like a paste, really, which is perfect for ketchup. So, um, this will take a bit to get back up to temperature just because these were tomatoes from the fridge. So we'll let everything get up to temperature and then blend the onion and garlic in with the tomatoes so and get it even thinner. And then we'll add the spices. I'm going to just cover it so if it starts boiling, there's not splatter of tomato all over my kitchen. I'm going to go ahead and add my vinegar now because it's trying to boil, but it truly is like lava. It's so thick. This will help loosen it up. And then I'll add the meat. Usually when I make this, I'm only making about, you know, a quart or two. So this is quite a large recipe. Now for the maple, it's three cups, quite a bit. However, it's a condiment, I'm using small amounts. We'll gather the spices and we'll add that before we blend it. Four teaspoons of celery salt. This is homemade celery salt so its consistency is a little bit finer because of the blending. Four teaspoons of mustard powder. really worried about clumping because I'm going to blend it. And one teaspoon of cloves. Black pepper. Eight teaspoons of salt. Ketchup came up to a boil. Now I'm going to go ahead and just ladle some into my Vitamix. Give it a really good puree. We'll take quite a few batches based on the amount I have here. I like the consistency though. 
You can add thickeners if you need to. The beauty of the defrosting the frozen tomatoes and pouring off the liquid is that I have a good chance that I may not need to add any thickeners. So as I'm blending, I'm just watching to see if there's any chunks left that aren't. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that into a different pot. You know, we love dishes. So I can keep pureeing. And this, the one thing that does happen is right now this is red. And every time I puree it, it turns orange. So I have orange ketchup, which I don't know how to change that. I guess not puree it so much, but I really don't want chunks in my ketchup. It's not a consistency I'm used to. I think I'll be able to add the rest of this one. Water is boiling at a rapid boil, so it's time to get these over there. Again, I already sterilized these jars. Now I'm just going to ladle them in. Actually, I need to get my caps warmed up. This is very thick. It's perfect. underestimated the amount of pints I would need. I can only water bath so many at a time anyway so I can prepare more by the first batch is going. And I'm not complaining. I would prefer more and not to have to purchase it after the effort. probably need three to four more jars. Just gonna clean the top off. Just warm water. Some people use vinegar. This is enough for my first batch. right in the boiling water. So the ketchup's all done. We ended up with 14 pints of ketchup, one that wasn't quite filled, ready for the fridge. Um, this is the brand we usually use, $6 a bottle. We add our own uh, maple syrup to it just to sweeten it a little because it's unsweetened. So we figure this is about $125 worth of ketchup. We're not, again, doing this you know, for economic reasons per se, though it does feel a bit rewarding when you're spending $6 for a small bottle of ketchup. This really is about health and knowing what's in our food and it's part of our health journey. We appreciate you joining us and hope to see you on the next one.